Central Bank of Nigeria unveils Nigerian domestic card Afrigo to curb capital flight and boost data security. United Kingdom removes duty on Nigerian exports. Oil prices firm up buoyed by stronger than expected U.S. economic growth. And it's a winning streak for stock markets across the world based on the better than expected U.S. growth. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Musa Bakar, your guide. Now let's begin with Naira redesign. There's been allegations making the rounds on social media that some banks are rejecting the old Naira days to the 31st January deadline by the central bank. Bossede Abel, who has been updating us on this policy, went out to investigate the allegations and now reports. The central bank at the just concluded monetary policy committee meeting in Abuja assured Nigerians that the Apex Bank is currently printing more bank notes which would be supplied to banks to boost availability as the old note would expire at the end of the month. But then, there's been allegations that some banks are rejecting the old notes while holding the new ones or giving to favored customers, thereby causing apprehension among citizens. Let's get to find out how true these allegations are. No, I don't have an experience, so I will not abide by the allegation. If I have gone to a bank and they rejected my money, I will accept. I don't accept things that I don't see with my eyes. I went to the bank. They accept pay-in, but collection, there's no new cash inside the bank, but they will tell you, go to the ATM. I went to the bank. I deposit the odd money. 100,000 naira, and they receive it successfully. If I give them money, I want to collect money again to do my business. They will, see, they will soon give me back that same old money I gave them back. They say I should go to the ATM, and the ATM dispenses only 20,000 naira. Since I've been, depo even this morning I deposit, and I'm going to deposit in FCMB now. I have never seen it. But the only thing, if we won't withdraw, I call the counter, they will still give old note. And it's not everywhere that you can pay in pay online or do transfer and all that so the situation is a little bit challenging where you are not being attended to and you are it's like frustration we must excite patients because it's actually the government know why they they, they, they made this policy for nigerians we don't reject oh no we are still collect we are still collecting it in fact we'll still be here at office tomorrow saturday we'll still be here on sunday to still collect the ordinance from our investigations, no one could confirm that their old notes were rejected by the banks, most of which are abiding by the CBN's directive to collect old notes. We however observe that the January 31 deadline has created panic withdrawal at most ATMs within the FCT. In Abuja, Bosse de Ebo. Oh, thank you, Bosse de. Consolidating on its cashless policy, the Central Bank of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, has unveiled the first ever domestic card scheme. Ruth Ario Samuel, who was at the virtual lunch, reports that the card called Afrigo, which will run alongside existing ATM cards, was unveiled by the Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefele. The beginning of a new era, charting the future of payments. The stage is set. 
optimistic on the advantages of the card on the economy, the CBN governor said the scheme will in no way affect international service providers. Instead, it will build opportunities for the Nigerian economy to integrate the informal segment, reduce shadow banking, and bring more Nigerians into the formal financial services system. The establishment of national domestic card schemes is in line with domestic global trends. Nigeria, by this initiative, will therefore be joining countries like China, Russia, Turkey, and India, who have launched domestic card schemes and harnessed the transformative benefits for their respective payments and financial systems, particularly for the underbanked. Stating how strategic Nigeria is, stakeholders highlighted that the national domestic card scheme AFRIGO, which is produced by Nigeria for Nigerians and Africans as well, is a collaborative effort of payment ecosystems in Nigeria for the greater benefit of all. This is a card that would uh, help the economy in uh, areas of uh, FX management, a platform for innovation where we can actually build solutions to our own Problems. Nigerian National Domestic Card Scheme aims to facilitate the growth of Nigeria's payment ecosystem, promote more customized payment services, tighten payment security, deepen financial participation, ensure data sovereignty, eradicate foreign exchange dependency, as well as improved affordability and more flexible payment options. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel. Now to the business of the day. President Muhammad Buhari on Monday performed the historic inauguration of the $1.5 billion Lekki Deep Sea Port located at Itoke Village, Ibeju, uh, Lekki, in Lagos State. Authorities say the new port, which is one of the largest in West Africa, is expected to ease congestion at the country's ports and help it become an Africa to help for transshipment, handling cargoes in transit for other destinations. How will this improve connectivity as well as serve as a major driver for economic growth in the region? I have joining me from our Protarket studio, Ofon Udufia. He is the Executive Secretary, Institute of Export Operations and Management, and President Rivas Bielsa Shipment uh, Shippers Association, Ribasa. You're welcome to Business Express. Me once again, Musa. Hi, Zabuja. But uh, Mr. Ophon, you seem to be everywhere. <laughs> okay. seaports inherited from the uh, British colonial administration are no longer functional or operate below capacity. Uh, currently, most commercial activities go through the two in Lagos and two others in and around Port Harcourt, resulting in steady gridlock and logistics issues for imports and exports. How will the new ports improve efficiency and connectivity? It's very good because um, it's um, overdue, but it's good that um, we have started. It's better to be um, late than never. As you rightly said, Putako Port was founded, the Area 1 Post was built in 1945, and the, um, all the infrastructures has become obsolete. And the Nune Port came to help. Then the Tinkan and Apapa Port were also there. But um, with that, we're still having challenges because our population is growing and the volume of trade coming into Nigeria is large. So we needed this um, deep sea port that could act as a transshipment base to ease the congestion on this other port. So it's a welcome development that at this point in time that we are trying to increase our trade and the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is in place. It's better that we have it now and it will really improve um, our trade and um, also the turnaround period of our ports so it will improve our economy. Okay, now you, that, that you have, just as you said, it will improve our economy. Tell us how will it improve our economy. Tell us the benefits. Benefits are, you know, economy of scale. That particular seaport that being um, 
um, inaugurated as it were is very very big and it's, the depth is about 16 meter depth which means it can carry the biggest ship in the world and it can even carry a vessel about four times the capacity of four times capacity of what would have gone to Tinkan or a papa so by so doing we can even use batches and other mm, uh, vessels to take this cargo out of that seaport so the capacity of that seaport is large and not only for nigeria it can also serve the western sub regions so that other cargo that comes in that wants to go to ghana Benin republic and the rest can come through nigeria so by so doing the revenue that we generated in the port will be left in nigeria so it is one of the best things that has happened to the maritime industry. And besides that too, you know, we're having congestion in Apapa. When you have congestion, the turn round time for the vessel delays. We are paying demurrage more than what you are supposed to. Because if you are charging a vessel, maybe $15,000 per day, and that vessel happened because of, um, uh, of congestion, could not disembark, and it spent two extra days. So you now see that you'll be paying a demurrage of, of $30,000 as against they would have just done the business and go back without the marriage. Okay. Is it just about capacity or efficiency now? And efficiency because, because of the size of the vessel and the, um, the vessel that come in there now will come with modern facilities as against the other deblighted um, bath that we had. Like if you come to Area 1, we had bad 1 in Port Harcourt, we had bad 1, 2, 3, 4, up to bath 8. Some vessel will come and hang just for the bat to be free. But in this case, there will not be that issue of batting space for vessel. So it's both profitable and also efficient. It will be effective. It will allow us to do more. A vessel carrying about 15,000 containers of 20 foot can enter that place and then leave at a no distant time. Unlike others, smaller seaport that vessel will come in, maybe because of the tight, low tide, he's really discharging, he cannot leave. So both it to build efficient and effective. So it's one of the best things that's happened to the Nigerian economy. Okay, I, I understand that it's a joint uh, venture between Nigeria, Singapore, and is run by, uh, it's going to be run by a French company. What does this partnership imply uh, for Nigeria's investment climate? What it means is that we are going to be expecting a foreign direct investment into Nigeria because the counterpart coming have to bring in their money. Then more than that, the wall is going towards what we call public-private partnership. You know, government, as I often said, are not good drivers. They often get accidents. So when you bring in the private sector to come in and government with their policy, this business will be sustainable, they'll be effective, they'll be efficient, and you see that people will patronize. A lot of people want to patronize business owned by private and in conjunction with government. So this is one of the best things. For instance, you can even see the, 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 the promoter, Dangote Group and the rest. When they promote, people find confidence, they buy more shares into it. So this is one of the um, best things that's happened to the um, maritime industry, to the traders, to the shippers. We are going to have economy of scale. If you were to charter one vessel that will come into the system, maybe 12,000 metric tons, and a vessel that is four times that, about 50,000 metric tons, can still bring in your cargo. And then the cost of doing business will reduce because what you are paying in now, instead of getting the vessel, doing the bunker, and doing everything yourself, you can now do a combined shipment with this. And then at getting to the, the this deep sea port, some can go to Onisha using the Nigerian inland waterways, some can come to Putakot, some can go to Tinkan, and as such. So you see that on economy of scale, items are supposed to be very cheap on these um, um, ports. Okay, uh, how soon are we going to see uh, this uh, uh, development? Yes, um, that question, I think um, NPA, Nimasa, and the sponsors of this project will tell us when the first vessel will land there. We are also living in expectancy because we, the shippers, are looking at the ease of doing business so we are still waiting to hear, but I know in a this no distant time when the cargo owners will soon start making that uh, port. Because even though they have the port, it is the people that are importing that will tell their supplier or their exporter where their cargo will go. So we are waiting and excited to see where the first vessel will land there and um, disembark our cargoes. Okay, you, you talked about the capacity and efficiency. Uh, what about jobs? What are we likely to see? How many jobs are going to be created? Yes, I would say a lot of jobs will be created because 
If you go into the maritime industry, mainly the ports, a lot of jobs are created, both direct and indirect jobs. For a vessel of that martini to come in, we will have seafarers, we have um, the Steve Doras. So many jobs will be created within the sub-region, not only for Nigeria. Because if some cargo are coming to Port Harcourt, apart from working directly there, they are still going to work on that cargo, going to Ne, going to Cocoa Port, going to Brutu Port, and the rest of them going to Calabar Port. So this is a good way of creating employment for Nigerians. And as it's often said that he that holds the water holds the wealth of the world. Over 80% of the international trade is done by sea. So that would tell you that both direct and indirect jobs will be created as a result of this wonderful investment in Nigeria. Okay, before I let you go, the blue economy is fast gaining traction in development cycles as a, a policy option for countries to further their economic goals. Do you think Nigeria is doing enough? Nigeria is trying, but we are not doing enough. Because when you are doing talking about blue economy, aside from the fact that vessels bring containers through the ports, we still have a lot of work to do. All the wreckage in our ocean must be removed. Our ocean must be made sustainable and environmentally friendly. You go into some ocean today in Nigeria, you see it has become a dumping ground for waste. So we need to do more, and it's even affecting the uh, sea inhabitants. The fishery and aquaculture elements of it need to be put in place. And then again, on the issue of security, you see that some countries that are, are, who don't even have much sea coastal area like us receive as much as 44 point something million visitors coming in. For example, like Gambia. What is Gambia? That, what is uh, Gambia mainstay? It's tourism and groundnuts. They make more money in tourism than in agriculture. So Nigeria, we need to do more, like even in Portugal where I am. You can go to Area 1 and then decide to take a trip by sea as a tourist to Old Bagana. You can go to Boni Abonima, and it is a wonderful scenario. But the challenge is we need to do more on the aspect of security to allow us to get more and benefit from this. Tourism is one area that can actually bring money to Nigeria. Very much. Uh Ofon Udovia, Executive Secretary, uh, Institute of Export Operation and Management, and President Rivers uh, by Elsa Shippers Association. Thank you for your contribution. Okay. Now, moving on, the Central Bank of Nigeria has enough redesigned Naira notes for deposit money banks to make available for customers. Deputy Director, Governor's Department, CBN, stated this during an interaction with traditional rulers in Epe. Abuladi Salami reports. Raising against time in the bid to ensure that Nigerians, especially residents in the rural area, will not be denied opportunity to have basic knowledge about the redesigned Naira notes before deadline informed the Apex Bank's decision to sensitize the Ekpe community. The Central Bank of Nigeria officials on ground thought the monarchs that as an alternative to cater for the availability of the new notes, POS machines have been provided to members of the communities in areas where commercial banks cannot be easily accessible. So we have, we have been to the bank, so I have told the bank to make sure they put in a lot of money into the ITM machines so that we don't want a case where people will go there and see the same old notes that is coming out from the machines. So please, we just come to so that you can help us to tell your people in, within the vicinity to know that this thing is a very important assignment that must be done by all of us. While acknowledging the initiative of the bank towards addressing the high volume of liquidity in circulation, the custodians of tradition raised concerns on the scarcity of the redesigned notes. We accept the new currency by the CBA from the federal government. But what we are agitating for is that to make sure that the, the money is available to all banks so our people can get it through the bank. Interacting with traders at the popular fish market in Ekwe, officials of the Apex Bank charged market women to make available the Naira notes in their custody in exchange for the redesigned notes. We are pleading with our market women, our fishermen. That is why we have come to the riverine area ourselves 
to preach the same message, to let them know that January 31 is just a few days from now. They can take their existing 1,500 and 200 naira notes to every bank around them. And of course, get the new notes. Members of the community were reminded that the Apex Bank decision to face out the old naira notes on 31st of January is sacrosanct. In Lagos, Abola de Salami. And out of energy, oil prices rose for a second session on Friday, buoyed by stronger than expected U.S. economic growth, strong middle distillate refining margins, and hopes of a rapid recovery in Chinese demand. Brent futures gained $1.15 or 0.3% 0 0 to $88.62 a barrel. U.S. crude also rose by 1.3%, gaining $1.01. 1 .01. Both benchmarks advanced by more than 1% on Thursday. Day and are heading for a third straight week of gains. Meanwhile, OPEC Plus delegates will meet next week to review crude production levels. Let's now see the prices of oil and other commodities on the global market. Nigerian equities ended the last trading day for the week on a negative territory. At the end of the day's trading, the all share index depreciated to 52,657.88 from 52,752.96 in the previous session, with market capitalization also dropping to 28.68 trillion naira. A total of 171.1 million shares valued valued at 2.34 billion were traded in 3,599 deals. Next is Global Stocks Review. Global stocks managed to sustain momentum this Friday, although European stocks opened near flat and U.S. futures in the red. The DAX in Germany was within the flat line, UK's FTSE gained 0.14%, and the French CAC was up 0.17%. In Asia, stocks traded higher as traders digested Tokyo's general recall consumer prices, which rose 4.3%. The Nikkei 225 ended its session higher at twenty seven thousand three hundred and eighty two point five six Hong Kong's Hang Seng index was up zero point five four percent while the Shanghai composite is still closed for the Lunar New Year holidays. U.S. stock futures fell slightly in early trades as investors closed out a week that saw better than expected economic growth. The Dow Jones Industrial Average eased by 38 points and Nasdaq 100 was down 0.5%. Now, African markets also rose to wrap up the week. Morocco's free float index was the relative outperformer, advancing 1.14%, followed by South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 and Tunisia's Stone Index, while Namibia's overall index bucked the trend. And that's Global Market Review. I am Neka Oko. And that wraps Business Express for now. Remember to send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NT's channel. The clock is ticking. It is four days, or it is a couple of days to the uh, close of the Naira swap window. Do well to return your old notes so you don't get caught unaware. Also note that the banks are obliged to collect the old notes during this period as they remain legal tender till then. Business Express returns on Monday at 3 p.m. I'm Musa Abubakar.